हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर एंजुम रशीद वेलकम टू माय चैनल पीट्रियाटिक्स एंड लाइफ टिप्स इन दिस वीडियो आई विल टॉक अबाउट पीट्रियाटिक एटेक्सिया टिलिंजेक्टेसिया एटेक्सिया टिलिंजेक्टेसिया इज एन ऑटोसोमल रिसेसिव कॉम्प्लेक्स मल्टी सिस्टम सिंड्रोम विद न्यूरोलॉजिक ऑकुलर इम्यूनोलॉजिक एंडोक्राइनोलॉजिक एंड कुटेनियस एबनॉर्मेलिटीज Ataxia telangiectasia is due to mutation of ATM gene located on the long arm of chromosome 11. Because of this mutation there is defective DNA dependent protein kinase phosphatidyl inositol 3 kinase that phosphorylate protein involved in DNA repair and cell cycle control. So patient have increased sensitivity to ionizing radiation, defective DNA repair and frequent chromosomal abnormalities. Now I will discuss the clinical presentation. The most prominent feature is progressive cerebellar ataxia. It become apparent when the child begins to walk, usually by 2 years of age. The child has peculiar gait like little clowns. Ataxia is slowly and steadily progressive. Child usually requires a wheelchair by age 10 to 12 years. Ataxia telangiectasia may present with chorea rather than ataxia. Telangiectasia are the second major clinical manifestation. These are dilated vessels predominantly of venous origin, become evident by mid childhood, usually 3 to 6 years of age. These are found on bulbar conjunctiva over the bridge of the nose, on the ears and exposed surface of the extremities. Oculomotor abnormalities include oculomotor apraxia of the horizontal gaze. This is difficulty in shifting gaze from one object to another and overshooting the target with lateral movement of the head followed by refixating the eyes. There is also strabismus, hypometric saccad pursuit abnormalities and nystagmus. Ocular abnormalities are also steadily progressive. Other neurologic findings include dysenergia and intention tremor of the extremities. This become prominent with age. Dysarthria of the cerebellar type is present. Myoclonic jerks of the trunk and the extremities, particularly on intention, occur in some cases after age 9 to 10 years. Romberg sign is usually negative. There is slow initiation and performance of all voluntary activity and muscular hypotonia. Deep reflexes are normal in young child but usually diminished or absent after age 7 or 8 years. Plantar responses are flexor or equivocal. All sensations are intact. Vibratory and position senses may be impaired in older patient. In ataxia telangiectasia, child has characteristic faces. He is relaxed, dull, sad and seemingly inattentive but cheerful, alert when smiling. Older patient have mask like hypotonic cerebellar faces, stooping posture with drooped shoulders and head sunk forward and usually tilted to one side and there is also dystonic posturing of the fingers. In ataxia telangiectasia progeric changes of the skin and hair are cardinal features. There is loss of skin elasticity, chronic seborrheic blepharitis is also frequent, caffeolar spots usually single may be present. There is frequent hyperpigmented macules and occasional vitiligo. Cutaneous granulomas which are reddish brown nodules and ulcerated plaques may be present on face and limbs. In this patient humoral and cellular immunodeficiency may be present and chronic sinopulmonary infections are common. Most frequent is the selective immunoglobin A deficiency which is present in 50 to 80% of the patient. Immunoglobin E, immunoglobin G2 Four and total immunoglobin G levels may be decreased. Specific antibody titers is also decreased or normal. There are recurrent sinopulmonary infections which occur in 80% of the cases. Fatal varicella can also occur. Children with ataxia telangiectasia have 50 to 100 fold increased risk of developing lymphoreticular tumors including lymphoma, leukemia and Hodgkin disease as well as brain tumors including medulloblastoma, multiform glioblastoma and pilocytic astrocytoma. In adults with ataxia telangiectasia solid tumors are more frequent. There is also retardation of somatic growth. Significant dwarfism occur in majority. 
heights and weights of the child are typically at the 10th percentile by adolescent. Patients with ataxia telangiectasia who develop normal puberty most likely achieve somatic growth within normal range. Now about 30% of the patient have only mild mental retardation. Children with ataxia telangiectasia are socially responsive, appreciative and undemanding. Now I will discuss the laboratory studies. Important serum markers are alpha fetoprotein and carcinoembryonic antigen which are elevated. Chromosomal studies include chromosomal breaks especially of chromosome 14. Defects of humoral immunity include immunoglobin A absent or low, total immunoglobin G normal or low, immunoglobin G2 and G4 subclasses are low, immunoglobin E is absent or low and immunoglobin M may be normal or elevated. Now defects of cellular immunity include low lymphocyte count, poor response to skin test to common antigens, low T lymphocyte proliferation in the presence of mitogens and deficient antibody production to viral or bacterial antigens. Imaging studies include head MRI and CT scan shows non-specific cerebellar atrophy with widened cerebellar sulci and enlargement of fourth ventricle. Lateral skull X-ray shows decreased or absent adenoid tissue in the nasopharynx. Chest radiograph shows a small or absent thymic shadow, decreased mediastinal lymphoid tissue and pulmonary changes similar to those seen in cystic fibrosis. Other tests which can be done in ataxia telangiectasia include electromyogram and nerve conduction velocities. These are usually normal in smaller children, but signs of denervation and reduced nerve conduction velocity, especially in sensory fibers, may be present in later stages of the disease. Electroocularography can be done, which shows specific findings as mentioned in the clinical features. Genetic testing and DNA diagnosis can also be done. Now I will discuss the management. There is no specific treatment for ataxia telangiectasia. However, supportive measures are important. Antibiotics should be given for infections. Prevention of infection by regular injection of immunoglobin is considered useful. Neurologic manifestations are difficult to control. However, beta-adrenergic blockers may improve fine motor coordination in some cases. Specific consultation should be done. Rehabilitation and adequate educative support is also necessary. Physical therapy is important. Daily participation in a physical fitness program such as swimming, use of a special bicycle or graduated weightlifting is useful in maintaining good muscular strength and preventing limb contractures and may postpone confinement to a wheelchair. Next is the occupational therapy. It helps to develop functional adaptation in the activities of daily living. Speech therapy may be useful in improving articulation and increasing voice volume. Genetic counseling should be given to all patients and their family members. Long-term monitoring is very important. Patients with ataxia telangiectasia should undergo regular examination for early cancer detection. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel.